In this video, we'll work with ASMX web controls in ASP.NET. The W3Schools website provides a really handy web services example. What you see here is the dynamic page that's generated from an ASMX website when published from an ASP.NET project. What this describes is what's called the service description. This is the WSDL file for a web service. It's an industry standard format. It defines the um, methods that are available, or services you could say, that are available, um, such as converting Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit. This language makes it possible for someone developing a client application to call this service and know what parameters to pass and what results to expect back. In a sense, it's defining the protocol for interaction between the web service and a web client. All that is packaged in these sample calls that can be generated. And so, it's, in a sense, they're giving you a test client. So, let's say we want to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. This is all dynamically generated by the web server. So, I'm going to put a, let's say, 98.6 for Fahrenheit and click Invoke. The rendered result is what would come back to your client application. In this case, the number 37, the Celsius variant on that temperature. So that's how you test a web service that's published in this way. Now we're going to look at how to invoke the web service from Visual Studio. As you can see here, I'm now working in an ASP.NET website. I've already taken the liberty of configuring a web page with some basic values. This is simply text, convert Fahrenheit to Celsius, temperature, and then a text box and a button. Nothing else has been configured that would result in a web service call. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to call the, w, the, the W3Schools web service to convert our temperature. To do so, it's necessary to define a web reference in Visual Studio that would link the web service to our website. And to begin, I'm going to choose website, add web reference, and it's going to bring up a panel that looks just like this. From this point, it's necessary for me to enter a URL. This URL points to the W3Schools sample web service. Then when I click the Go button, it obtains the WSDL file from the web service, the one that we saw earlier, and it actually uses it to render the same test client that we saw before. Now at the same time, it's suggesting a reference name for the web service. This is the, the object name that we would work with in code, just as the same way we'd work with any other object, such as a web control text box. Now when I click Add Reference, Visual Studio then configures that web reference in the project. So we can see over here there's a new folder called App Web References, and it's broken down into um, this namespace definition of com, w3schools, ww, temp convert, and this is called the discovery map. And in this area, we can see that there is, in fact, the WSDL file. This is the same one that the site publishes, as well as discovery information regarding how to find the service. We're now at the point where we can interact with the web service in code. To do so, I'm just going to double-click the button, putting us in a button-click event handler. And then I'm going to define a reference in code to that web service. I first need to create an object that represents the web service itself. To do that, I use the dim statement. And I'm going to dimension, let's just call it WS W3Schools. And then I'm going to set it to a new instance of the web service, com.w3schools.www.tempconvert. The new statement is really vital because without it, we just have a placeholder for the web service. We don't have a reference to the web service itself. Our code would never work. Now what I'm going to do is define a variable that will store the result from calling the web service. So now I'm going to call this dim stir result as string, and then I'll invoke my web service method. So what that means is the object I just created, I'm going to use it. WS, W3Schools, and I can use my the period key to bring up methods and properties that relate to the service. All I have to do is look for the, mouth, the, the method that says Fahrenheit to Celsius. 
Now, when you see these me other methods listed, such as end Celsius to Fahrenheit or begin Celsius to Fahrenheit, those methods are necessary for working with AJAX calls, asynchronous JavaScript and XML. In an AJAX call, we could click that button, and the web service processing what happened behind the scenes, and the user will be free to take other actions on the page. If you've ever visited a website, say a high multimedia site, such as Facebook um, or MySpace, where there are all sorts of things happening, many of those panels or div tags that you see on the page are loaded asynchronously with JavaScript, so you can still enjoy visiting the site. What I'm going to do right now is just choose the Fahrenheit to Celsius method. I double click it and then I, I just put parentheses which shows me hence what the variable should be. So I'm going to map this to our text box control on the page. So I'm going to type me.textbox1.text. Now in a real life production application you need to do a few more things. You'd have to make sure that the value in that text box is numeric or in the right range of temperatures, a couple other checks. But for now, all we're going to do is just accept the value that's entered for purposes of illustrating this feature. So now we've actually set up a call to the web service. This call does a heck of a lot. It actually creates an XML request object, and then it opens a channel to the web service and, and essentially posts it through HTTP across to the web service. The web service processes the request and returns back an output variable, which in our case is the converted temperature, and they, that happens through a response XML body that's received by our site. We don't have to code any of that directly. We just write one line of code and all of those steps happen behind the scenes. So now what we're going to do is set the value of our... Well, let's see what we have here. We have, a temp we have a text box, but we don't have a place to put anything. So what we'll do now is we'll enhance our page, and we'll put Celsius, and we'll add a label control. Just occurred to me I don't have anywhere to put my output temperature, but now we do. So now what we can say is me.label1.text equals string result. And the next thing we'll do is we'll try this all and see how it goes. So we'll run our page. And we'll enter a temperature. The same thing we did before. So behind the scenes, this program is invoking the same process that we tested directly on the service itself. Click Convert. Calls the web service. And it produces the Celsius of 37. So I'm going to stop debugging and set a breakpoint so we can see this for ourselves. So now when I click the, the play button to debug the button click event, I enter a temperature of 68 and click convert. The first thing we do is we create a new, a new instance of the web service. Right now it's set to nothing. When I click the step over button, it's set to a reference. Now this line here we wouldn't want to use step into because it'll attempt to step into remote debugging on that site at the W3School server. That could cause some, some glitches in our debugging. So we'll step over the line, but we see the string now has a 20 in it. That's the Celsius conversion. So now the label has no value. Oh, sorry. The label is just sent to the default value of label right now. And so what we'll do is step into that line and return to our page, and we have our conversion. It's that simple to work with web services. I hope you benefited from this video, and have a good day.